Hey everybody, today I'm here at the Beatty Pinery. It's just uh, outside of Alston, Ontario, Canada. And uh, last time I was here, I noticed a quite a nice, few uh, nice little um, objects, which I think would be good for some macro photography. So uh, I didn't have my camera at that point in time, but I brought it along today and I thought I'd bring you guys along, maybe give you some tips, uh, some ideas, and see what I, what in here I can find and uh, hopefully get some good pictures. Let's get started. So for today's adventure, I am traveling light just because I plan on doing only some macro work. So basically what I'm bringing along today is just my tripod and actually with my tripod, I removed the center stand from in there so I can get lower to the ground and my camera, Pentax K1 with a Sigma 105 macro. So hopefully we can get some good shots out while I'm out here and um, see how things go. Wish me luck. Bye. come across this fungus that's growing on the side of this tree. I thought it might might make an interesting uh, photo so I set it up like so. See my preview here as to what I'm looking at if you can see it in there. But uh, my settings are I've got aperture at f16, ISO is at 200 and uh, the shutter speed it's so basically i'm in aperture priority so it's selecting the speed for me but it's currently setting at 1.3 seconds so i'm going to take this and uh, go from there yeah, just for a little tip when you are doing something like this a tripod is pretty much you really should use a tripod if you can at all help it just to keep things super stable um, i'm actually also using a two second timer and uh, I'm using a live view just to, so that the mirror is up and I don't have to worry about any mirror slap to, to uh, make things all wonky on me. So let's just take this picture and let the camera do its thing. And it is done. And I will give you a quick preview of what we got here. Next I found this very strange looking mushroom. I'll take a picture of that and again this is my setup. Basically just pointing straight at it. It's hard to see again on the screen but it looks pretty decent but I'll, I'll flash the, the finished edited photo up on the screen for you to have a look at. But um, one thing when it comes to macro photography it is in my opinion anyways it's perfectly fine to center your your subject on the screen quite often when I'm doing macro work I'll actually do a square crop just to help bring your eye into the the, the item that you're photographing 99.9% uh, .9 of the time I follow the rule of thirds or some variation of it but with macro I typically don't I try to keep things square on so there's a tip for you something you might want to try out next time you're out doing something like this came across this big mushroom. I think it's quite interesting. And it's hard to see from the video how big it is, but just to give you an idea. Here's my hand sitting over top of it, so it's a good size one, so I don't think I've ever seen one that big myself personally, so 
I'm gonna get a picture of this one. And uh, my settings for this one, ISO 200, F16, and it's about a quarter of a second is roughly what it's gonna be for this one. And it's sitting in a nice pool of light, so I'm hoping this is gonna turn out nice. Uh, another tip when I'm doing photography like this is I typically set my camera into full uh, manual focus and then I fine-tune the focus myself to get it right where I want it. Um, this, in, in my case I do have focus peaking so that helps so uh, my suggestion is that if you do have focus peaking switch your camera into live view, use the focus peaking and aim to get the focus on the front of your object so in this case the uh, uh, it's uh, the mushroom that's, and I'm uh, going to take a shot of this one now and uh, I'll pop the results up on the screen. Well, sometimes we do a macro, sometimes the rule of thirds just looks like it will work and I think in this case I'm actually going to use it instead of doing a center. So I'll just give you a quick preview of the screen here so you can have a look and see what I mean. As you can see, I think in this case the rule of thirds actually works quite well. Just the, the way the lines kind of lead up to the, uh, the the mushrooms and then sort of lead away from it as well too. So I think this is going to work out quite nice. So uh, get up there, I'll take this picture and uh, again I'll pop a preview up on the screen for you. For the most part, any of these photos I'm taking, I'm using a very small aperture so I get as much depth of field as I can. Because with macro photography, you're so close to your subject that the depth of field is just so shallow that you need as much as you can get. So, so far today I've been shooting all these at f16. I could go up to say like f32 if I wanted to, but uh, the, the more you close it down, the more apt it is that you're, you're um, your just photos aren't going to be as sharp as they could be. It's just the nature of the beast with most, most lenses. So hopefully this information helps you guys out. Onward bound. So I have this guy here sitting here. He's actually a pretty decent size too. Not as big as that other one. But uh, he's sitting, was sitting in a nice pool of light when the sun's starting to come back now. But as I was setting up, the light disappeared. So he is coming back into, into the light. So I'm going to grab this before the sun disappears again. If you are into fungus, this is a good time of year to be out shooting because the fungus are just a full abundance. There's mushrooms and fungus and all that sort of stuff everywhere. Uh, have a look at this little um, fallen tree I found here. You might find this kind of interesting to look at. There is fungus growing all over this stump, or fallen log I guess technically. There, down there, just starting to grow out there, another one starting to grow out there. It's actually quite interesting seeing all this fungus coming out now. Last time I was out here, I came across these unusual white flowers, so I wasn't sure what they were. I took a quick snapshot of them, and somebody identified them for me, but I don't remember what they're called. But I'll uh, probably flash it up on the screen somewhere, just so you can. Uh, I'll flash it up on the screen, say over here or somewhere, so you can uh, see what they are. But I'm going to actually do two shots here because I've never seen these kinds of flowers before, and I didn't think I'd find them again when I came in here. But I'm going to do an overall shot of them, just to show the cluster of them and then I think I'm going to get up and close and personal with and just pick out one of them to uh, do a, or maybe a closer shot a little bit more detailed of the, the flower head itself hopefully uh, these turn out
most of these photos I've been shooting at ISO 100 but sometimes even when you do have a tripod if you do have a bit of a breeze you might actually have to bring your ISO up to get a, a decent shutter speed because uh, whatever you're shooting might actually be moving in which case you, you, if you don't use a faster shutter speed you're gonna end up with a bit of a blur and in my case most of these mushrooms are not moving but it is something to keep in mind if you're taking doing macros of flowers or anything like that there's always a chance so you could uh, run into some issues so sometimes the low ISO on a tripod isn't always the, the rule so that's something to keep in mind Oh, ate it back in one piece. Minimal mosquito bites there, actually. Worse in there than they normally are, but anyways, got some good pictures. Hopefully you find this information good and informative. And that's it for today. Have yourself a good one. See you next time. Well, forgot something important. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content, subscribe and uh, otherwise if you have any questions just leave them in the comments below bye guys for the most part all these Ooh, stupid bug